Hi and welcome to Jesse James Beads. My name is Jem and I'm here today to talk about Cirque, the January 2024 Magical Mystery Bead Box. So let's get down to the board and take a closer look at the project we're going to make together. The Magical Mystery Bead Box for January 2024 entitled Cirque from Jesse James Beads. Let's take a look at what we get in that box. I've got two pot bead mixes. This is entitled Cirque. Lots of glorious colours and textures therein. Some huge barrel beads and some gorgeous almost watermelon tourmaline colour beads there. A beautiful collection in the first pot alone. That is from the January 2024 box. We've also got White Tiger. And in White Tiger, you have two of these fantastic, you could use them as connectors, pendants, earrings. You could even use them as decorative items. You've got some of these glorious, almost zebra print tone beads there as well. Lots of different colours and textures. And some of my favourites in this collection are these beautiful little star beads. Really good drill apertures in those as well. Let's pop that up to the top for a moment. You have got a connector, the Cirque connector, which has got four loops on the rear. You could use that in bracelets, pendants, whatever you fancy. We have got two amazing strands. This is called Centre Stage and it takes Centre Stage absolutely. Glorious sheen, shine and colour therein golden elephants will absolutely take your breath away heavyweight metallics with such a glorious quality and attention to detail we've also got the most gorgeously colored fairy silk there it's a beautiful i don't know what you describe that is somewhere between a mauve and purple it's lovely then we have got what we're working with today in the packet you will receive three aerial hoop these are closed round forms in a hammered gold. Let's have a look. We also will receive in this bead box three of the Soleil strands graduated through those colours like an amazing sunset. And then you would get two of these disco ball looped big top connectors. So you've got a loop on either side of those so you could use them centrally or as a dropper. For today's project, we're going to be taking a single bead from the White Tiger Mix. We're going to be using one of our aerial hoop forms. We're going to be using one of that double looped big top connectors. And we'll also use one of our Soleil strands, but I'm going to leave those on their strands for the moment because there are a multitude of beads involved. I'm going to show you how you can move those from the thread that they come on onto some finer gauge wire which is what we're going to use to create our project today which is this fabulously graduated pendant it's got lots of movement it's got lots of sparkle and it's got lots of life i love having that colorway graduated for me i don't have to think too hard and it is really very easy to achieve this almost parve look pendant design so the two wires we're going to be working with today are a short length of 18 gauge round wire that can be a medium temper and we're also going to be working with a reel of 26 gauge. This is a round medium temper wire. So a German style or a soft craft wire will be absolutely fine. Now, when you're ready to start working, what we're going to do is just coerce that little knot at the very end of the strand, slightly away from that bead, just putting a little bit of pressure. And what you'll find is that your 26 gauge wire will fit inside those beads and move all the way along. So what we can do is re-thread these beads directly onto a reel of 26 gauge wire. And the reason I suggest not cutting your wire is because it's very sad if they all fall off the end, if you drop them or the cat disturbs you or the doorbell goes or something like that. So what we will do is push that wire all the way along to the far end and then we can cut away from the packaging 
and then you can very simply just pull the thread out when you're sure you've made a little bit of a knot at the other end in your wire and I'll show you what I mean now. Once you've pushed all of the beads onto the wire and pulled away the thread, it does move really easily. The thread is fine enough to be in the core of those beads alongside the wire. We're using 26 gauge. What we need to do is just make a little temporary bead stopper. So what we're going to do is turn over about half an inch of wire on the end and push it flat against the body of the wire. And then we'll do that again. So you've got two little lengths scrunched up together and then all I'm going to do is come to the midpoint of that little bundle and wrap around a couple of times. I think of this as a temporary T-pin and it just stops those beads if you drop the wire from falling to the floor because restranding that whole strand of beautifully graduated beads is not something that I fancied if I'm completely honest. The next thing we need to do is go to the other end still connected at this stage to the spool and I'm going to cut that to about three feet in length and then add another little bead stopper on the other end. You can of course use an actual bead stopper but in wire sometimes it's a little bit more preferable to have a little temporary T-pin just so that nothing goes astray. So let's grab that aerial hoop and get cracking with the demonstration. What we're going to do is just move those beads from your chosen start point away a couple of inches, not too far, we'll be needing them in a moment, and just put that T-pin into the middle and I'm going to push that into the middle by just over an inch. This gives me enough wire to wrap around and get a good grip starting point. I'm looking to start with three wraps and then I'm just going to push that little T-pin out of the way at the back. We'll leave it there for the time being until we've got a good solid start. So I've got three visible wraps on that aerial hoop. So I'm just going to give that a very gentle squish down to get that nice and tidy. And then I'm going to flip over to the other side. So you can work in whichever direction makes you happy from inside the ring to the outside or as I am right now from the outside to the inside as you prefer. In fact, I think it might be easier to show you if I just draw very, very gently that wire all the way through. So what I'm doing here is I'm controlling the wire coming through the centre without leaving any beads getting stranded, making sure that I don't snag the little temporary T-pin on anything, keeping everything nice and tidy. So we're going to zip wire down the first three beads and starting from the centre of the hoop to the outside of the hoop, I'm going to allow three beads to sit diagonally across the surface of that beautiful hoop. Now they sit at a lovely jaunty angle and as you graduate through the strand that really becomes quite an elegant colour switch. So I'm going to draw the wire now up through the centre. There's no bagginess there but it's not so tight that my beads are at risk and I'm going to draw the whole strand up through that centre. We're looking at around about three feet of wire, which may feel unwieldy, but you do definitely need that amount. Then we're going to zip line in the next three beads. Now, if you want to absolutely ram these beads on and try and get more beads onto the hoop, you may need more than three feet of wire, 36 inches, just over, oh, let me think what that is in centimetres, probably about 93 centimetres. So you might need to add a little more wire to this design if you want these beads to be clustered side by side. However, what I would say is that there's a lot of wire to work with and you might find it easier to leave a little bit of a gap. You'll still get that colour graduation. So I folded the wire around the outside and again, I'm going to draw the remainder of the wire up through the middle, minding that I don't pull or catch that wire uncomfortably give that a little bit of a pull to get it to sit and then we're going to zip line the next three beads in. So one, two, three over the surface of that aerial hoop at a nice jaunty diagonal angle. Support that last bead of your trilogy while you make the bend around the outside and it sounds like it's going to be difficult, it looks like it's going to be difficult but I promise you once you get into your rhythm it really isn't. Things to be aware of are your wire snagging or getting upset by a cat for instance. 
and making sure that you have little t-bend on the end so that you don't accidentally drop those beads off they have been beautifully color graded throughout and it would be a shame to have to sit and do that yourself so you can see already we're moving through a colour graduation on that aerial hoop, pushing those three beads down over the surface. If you find it easier, you could go for two beads. You may need to up the amount of wire you use if you're going to cluster those passes of wire closer together. So support that last bead, just pull the wire around the outside and then push the next stage up through the middle. I'm trying not to handle the wire too much as handling finer wire pre-warms it, makes it nice and soft initially, but makes it more delicate and prone to fracture later on. So I'm going to sit those beads diagonally again over the surface of that design. And then I'm going to show you one more time, just drawing that wire around the outside and then pulling that up the centre. So I'll continue for a moment and just fill the remainder of this beautiful aerial hoop with those graduated colour beads. So you can see I have a little bit of wire left over and a handful of beads just on, on the end there. So what I'm going to do is position those last three beads and cut about two inches or two and a half inches of wire away. Get those beads to sit properly as they would on exactly every other rotation. Draw that wire around until you get another three wraps in that gap and you'll need to stop before you get there so that you can fit that full stop on the end. So I'm going for three wraps again. If we turn this over to the back of the design, we can now cut away that first little T-pin and we can cut away the remainder of our winding wire and just ensure that both of those are flat on the back of the design and neat and tidy. Minding that you don't squash your beads on the front of the design, give it a little bit of a squish just to get that nice and neat. What you might like to do is just move those beads very, very gently around to have them sit exactly how you want and to fill up that little gap up at the top. So the last thing we're going to do is a basic, either a rosary loop or a double wrapped loop, however you'd like to think of it. I've taken a bead from the Tiger mix and we're going to start off by warming our length of wire through. This is about five and a half inches of 18 gauge round medium copper. And I'm going to start just to the side of the centre, put a right angle bend in, and then we're going to grab hold of those lovely wooden dowels. Sorry about the Velcro noise. I'm going to grab one of my new wooden dowels. This is the 9.5 millimetre or 0.37 of an inch. And we're going to create our first round form. So let's have a look. Get that wire wrapped all the way around. You could use your bail makers or any other round form that you have available. It's an oversized round form for a very good reason. Makes our life a little bit easier when choosing chains or necklaces to put through at the top. So that will become our necklace aperture or bail if you prefer. So we're just going to grip across there, wind that wire around to create a lovely tidy wrapped loop. Give that a bit of a squish. Get that to sit down neatly if it's moved at all, which mine has. And then trim away the excess. So I've just gone for three wraps around that centre. Just making sure that that's neat and tidy before you move on. So let's just rotate that around for a moment. Got a good round shape going on there. If you need to compress that spring form down, you can give that a little bit of a squish just to get that neat and tidy before we add our bead into position. So we're going to need, again, a reasonably large size. Let's see if the bail makers are available. If you don't have the beautiful wooden mandrels yet, you can use your bail maker or any other round form. So the angle that we're going to use now is in the same orientation as the first turn that we made so they are both going in the same direction and let's use the number six on those bail makers to create a round form on the other side it's basically what we refer to as a rosary link or a double wrapped loop so let's give that a little bit of hardening by tapping open and closed with those flat facing pliers 
get that nice and strong so it doesn't move and then open that up quite wide so you can see there's a large gap like so and what we're going to do is to slide that into position on our pendant form so we've made that pendant form in fact what I might do is put that beautiful big top on first and then slide it onto the form and in that way that will hang just nice and centrally and then it's just a case of closing up the loop on your lower wrapped loop so gripping across that loop shape and then drawing the tail around now creating forms like this are a great way of using up any scraps of wire you have available and just rotate that around until you have filled the gap trying to do a slightly neater job than i have just done trim away the wire towards the rear of the design and then tidy up those coils making sure that you don't scratch any of your beads so let's have a look you can again of course tidy those little circles up just by giving them a little bit of a squish tucking the tail all the way around to make it neat and tidy and there you have your magical mystery bead box for January all ready to wear beautiful graduation of color i hope that you enjoy that